Would you please share with us um, your life before receiving Jesus Christ and before surrendering your life to Christ? Yeah, so I grew up in a Christian household, like most of us, um, but when I was 17 years old, I uh, fell away. I got with the wrong crowd and got a taste of the world and really enjoyed it, and it just went <laughs> downhill from there. Um, I got really addicted in, to drinking, to trying out all kinds of drugs, um, smoking, and then, you know, all the sexual impurity and all that stuff, and it just started tumbling downhill from there. Um, then I got into a relationship and, um, it was very abusive physically and verbally. And I just constantly just put myself through that because, um, it was just all based off just drinking the whole time. I used to (laughs) drive around with a bottle in my car every single time. And, um, before I do anything, I just have a couple shots just to relax myself and numb myself so that I can get through the day. Um, from there on, I finally got through the relationship after two and a half years, um, but I just continued to drink and party. Um, I'd stop by church once in a while just to make my family like, like, hey, I'm okay. (laughs) I come to church once in a while. Um, But uh, I just continued to go downhill. And then when I turned 21, I became a bartender. Um, So that just gave me more accessibility to um, better drugs, better parties, older crowds, Um, And it just continued to just get worse from that point on. Um, uh, Sorry. (laughs) Staying on track. Um, So when I was 21, before I turned 22, um, the drinking got so bad that um, I finally got my first DUI. So it got caught up with me. God gave me actually four opportunities where I got pulled over with alcohol in my car, being intoxicated, and I didn't get a DUI, and I didn't learn my lesson from that experience. And so he's like, it's about time, caught up. (laughs) So I got my first one, and I was just like, God, I'm so sorry. I promise I won't do it again. You know, we always do that when we get in trouble. And like a week later, I went right back to it. And I continued to party. I continued to go out. I continued to drink and drive. I just sword in the kingdom of hell basically on earth (laughs) so during this time what were the things that you were experiencing like some setbacks and how was your family going through this seeing you in this kind of condition um so total i got two duis just so you guys know yeah (laughs) it just continued to catch up with me um so my family was a is a very christian family and they continue to just pray for me and they continue to bless me they knew that god was one day going to deliver me from all of this um but for me i just continue to go through the same cycle every single time um and then last year around september time i broke up with or a relationship got broken that was a big deal and I felt like it was the end of the world. I went on like a five-day binge where I just drank and I slept at my friend's house and they had to physically wake me up and try to feed me to get some food in my system. Um, And then from that point on, I finally showed up at home and my mom was just like, Lisa, isn't it about time that you like take hold of your life, like take charge, you know, like, and she was like, hey, so how about that internship at Hungry Jen? And I was like, okay, I'll think about it. And it took two months. So uh, going back to 2019, you came for the conference at Race to Deliver, right? And this is where you heard about our internship, correct? And it kind of stuck with you a little bit, right? Could you please start from there? Yeah. Um, So I did show up to the 2019 conference and it was amazing amazing um but the internship really stuck to me but it was just something that was in the back of my head so i knew of it but i just felt like it wasn't the right timing for me um from that point on when was your breaking point to kind of surrendering everything to god and you know following him yeah so two months before the internship started i made the final decision to show up and uh just surrender everything to god And I think the moment I finally gave everything to God was as soon as I came here. Because I was just like, God, I'm going to surrender it all. I'm going all in. Um, And I just came here. And like for the first week of the internship, I would not stop crying. Just feeling like finally the veil was revealed. And it's like the love of God finally embraced me. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. That is so wonderful. Would you please share, uh, how are you doing with those addictions that you had to alcohol and drugs and things like that? 
Yeah, I feel like God completely delivered me from all that. Um, yeah, and just giving that, and with that, there was other roots of, you know, anger and gossip and all of that, and I just feel like God completely, like, restored me and made me brand new, a brand new vessel to serve his kingdom, and every single day, he changes me and transforms me and makes me a better person for him. Amen, amen, amen. Our God, our God is so wonderful. And lastly, Liz, would you please share a word of advice to people who might be watching us right now or sitting here in the sanctuary and they can connect. They feel like, you know, they are addicted to alcohol or drugs or they're so far away from God and they can't give up their life for Jesus. What would you suggest to them? That's a really hard one. <laughs> but I would just suggest just giving it all to him. I know what it's like constantly being in that cycle and going through it. And you feel like you're comfortable. But God has a greater plan for you. And if you finally surrender it all, you finally give it all and give it to God and let him take the lead, let him take control, he will deliver you from that. And he will set you in such a greater place that just living for him just comes so naturally. It's that love, it's that desire to constantly serve him and make your life devoted to him. Come on, amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate you sharing your testimony. Come on, let's put our hands together a little bit louder for Jesus Christ because He is worthy. Jesus is worthy of everything that we are afraid to lose. He is so good and He is so ready to touch you, to touch your case. The things that you came with today, He is ready. My question is, are you ready? to surrender everything to him this morning and I hope the answer is yes. Amen.